Hi friends! My name is Liz aka Knife Girl. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, then welcome back. I'm happy to have you. Today's video was actually inspired by a comment on one of my previous videos. So if you've seen any of my previous videos reviewing various backpacks, you may have seen me mention from time to time that I like to try and make my backpacks anti-theft because for some reason, I don't know why, I have a lot of anxiety around being pickpocketed and stolen from in public. And I had a comment on one of those videos asking what I use to secure my backpacks. And so I thought I would do an entire video showing how I kind of pickpocket proof myself. I guess I can't say anything is like absolutely foolproof because if someone is determined enough to steal from you, they will. But I know a lot of, just from, you know, watching videos about pickpocketing and stuff, I have kind of gotten a decent idea of how to make myself a harder target. And so I thought I would share that information with you. So maybe you can, if you're going somewhere, if you're traveling somewhere where pickpocketing is an issue, maybe you can kind of take certain steps to protect yourself and just, you know, so it doesn't ruin your trip and lead to obviously potentially bigger problems down the line. So if you are interested in seeing how I take measures to protect myself from theft and pickpocketing and what I do to my gear, then keep watching. Let's get into it. Basically, this kind of weird anxiety of mine just stems from a desire to travel, but I guess a fear of going to places where pickpocketing is an issue. And I know a lot of, you know, a lot of famous tourist destinations do have issues with pickpocketing, like Paris and Italy and various other tourist destinations. And just places that I've always wanted to travel, I wouldn't let it stop me from traveling to that place, but I just obviously have a lot of anxiety surrounding being pickpocketed. Even here in California and Venice Beach, people are kind of notorious for pickpocketing. So basically just somehow I've developed a huge anxiety about that. And so pretty much every backpack that I get or bag or whatever, I usually will take measures to turn it into more anti-theft safe, if that makes sense. And I just do this kind of compulsively without even having any kind of trip in mind. This is just something that I do. But, and in, you know, 99.9% .9 of instances it's unnecessary on my part but I do really have a lot of dreams and aspirations to travel and I really want to visit a lot of places but that is just something that is a fear of mine so I always make sure to try to protect myself no matter what so I thought I would share the various methods that I use with you so I could maybe give you some ideas so if you have some travel coming up or you know, this and that, maybe you can implement some things to save your own self some headaches and heartaches. So there's a lot of videos out there and content and information about pickpockets and how they act, how they are able to steal from you so successfully. And I would highly encourage that you go out onto the internet, Google, and seek out information because it is very, it's important to just be informed about how they work, how they operate, how they strike, how they pick their targets, etc. I think one of the most important methods of prevention from getting pickpocketed is just making sure that you don't look like an easy target 
and there's a lot more in-depth content out there. I'll try to link in the description below some videos that I've found to be helpful. So I think education is going to be your, your first line of defense, basically. That being said, I don't have a ton of experience and information on that myself, so I'm going to direct you to these other videos that I've watched. You can find them linked in the description below. The only thing that I'm going to talk about is what I put on my own gear to kind of make it a little bit more impenetrable. So there's kind of two things that I protect. I protect my bags and I protect my phone because your phone is basically you're carrying around, you know, whether you have an iPhone or an Android or whatever, it's probably expensive. It has all, most likely all your personal and financial information on it. This is an $800 computer just riding around in your pocket and it's very small and portable and very easy to steal. So primarily from what I've learned, phone is probably going to be your number one target. And you know, if they can get that, they'll probably go for that, but they might also, you know, try to go for other things. So the one thing that I definitely do is I secure my phone to my body um, with a strap. I, I know if I'm in a place where I'm comfortable and I'm not in really any danger of being pickpocketed, I'll usually just keep my phone in my pocket. But I know that if I'm somewhere that's out in public and it's busy, that is not a safe place at all. Sometimes even if it's just in your hand, it's not entirely safe from being snatched from you. So I have two things here that I use to kind of basically tether my phone to myself. So this one is a little crochet phone bag that I made. I found a tutorial here on YouTube. If you do crochet, I'll link it below so you can make your own or uh, a lot of people on Etsy make these. I make these. So if you're possibly interested in one of these, I would be happy to talk about maybe making one for you. Granted, this one in particular that I've pulled is not my best example because usually what I will do is I'll put something on the top to secure it entirely. Like I'll put a little loop and a button or some kind of loop and some kind of way to make sure that, you know, the phone can't just be plucked out. So this particular one is maybe not the best example, but it may be good enough. This one is tight enough where if it's hanging down and you try to pull the phone out, it's not really going to, you know, it's a little hard to get out just because this one is so tight around the phone. It's going to make it a little more challenging, but basically it's just a crossbody strap that I use. This is also handy if you don't have pockets. I like to wear this sometimes just if I'm wearing pants or a dress that doesn't have pockets, but it's also kind of handy to just make sure you have your phone secured with you. One other small con to this one is if I have to use my phone, I actually have to pull it out and have it in my hand. And then sometimes, you know, if I don't have a really tight grip on it, someone could snatch it. But for the most part, this could be very helpful to you. But the one that I use in, you know, a more serious situation, like a more serious travel situation is this one. And this is kind of, for me, this is kind of fail safe, foolproof, because I have kind of a twofold connection. I'll just, I'll show you what I have. So you can't really see in here. Maybe you can but I have this plastic piece that goes inside your phone case. It's just kept in there between your phone and the case and it allows you to have this little loop in there. I got it off Amazon. This came in a multi-pack. These will break after a while. It does take, I think, several months, maybe even a year, depending on how hard you are on it. If you're kind of bending it back and forth a lot, I've this is, I think, the third one that I'm on, but I've been using it for a while. So just be careful. These will break eventually, which is why I kind of have a, a backup system for that. So what I have here is I have this rubber silicone phone grip holder thing. So what I do is it's attached to a little carabiner and then it's attached to this lanyard here. 
So what I will do myself, this this is probably overkill, honestly. You can probably just use a regular phone leash, but this is what I do. So I make sure I have the carabiner attached to the little silicone strap thing. I will also loop it through the little loop on the phone. And then I will attach the strap to my phone like this. So you can see the carabiner here is connected both to the silicone strap and to the little plastic bit. It's connected to both spots. And then now I have just a regular lanyard that I like to wear crossbody. You can wear it around your neck. This thing is adjustable. You can find all whole variety of lanyard type things like this on Amazon. I can link this one in particular. I've used this one for a while and I really like it. It's very strong and secure. I've had it for a while. But the good thing about this system here is this allows me to have full access to my phone. I can use it and even if I am using it to say like look at a map or something, I know that even if someone did try to snatch it, they're not getting anywhere because it's attached to me. So this one this one is my foolproof fail safe method. And again, this is probably overkill, but it I feel safe and secure wearing this. I will usually always take this anywhere where there's going to be a crowd, like a fair, even a theme park, just anywhere where I will be one human kind of smushed between a bunch of humans. I will have this so that I know without a doubt that no one's going to just snatch my phone out of my hand. Uh, and it's also handy too for you're going to the bathroom and you want to make sure your phone doesn't fall into the toilet. I've had that happen before. Or you just don't have pockets or something or you're out doing something really active where your phone could slip out of your pocket and fall. Like if you're on a boat or something near water and you don't want your phone to slip out of your pocket and be lost forever in the sea. This just has a multitude of uses and it's very handy. So yes, these, these are my two options for making sure that my phone is protected and both have worked really well for me so far. Now the other thing that I always protect is my bag and I do this for backpacks, fanny packs, basically any bag that I have that I'm going to wear in a public place, most likely I will put some kind of locking type thing on it. So just for illustration purposes, I'm using this Baboon to the Moon fanny pack just because it's bright yellow. It's a little easier to see and I happen to have it on me. But again, I will do this on my backpack. As long as it has two zippers like this, as you can see, it's got two zippers, this will work. So I'll link these below. They're literally just little strings with these little clip things on them. And all you do is you can clip them together like that. They just kind of fit in to themselves. They can be kind of a little difficult to engage and disengage, which is what you want essentially, because you don't want a pickpocket to just be able to bam zing you're in there um so sometimes it does take two hands to kind of lock and unlock them but they're a very very simple easy solution these are very these are pretty inexpensive you can get like a huge pack of them for not that much money and that's what i've done i just bought a pack on amazon and i put them on every bag and then if i run out i buy another pack so this is kind of my main line of defense in bags. Now, if I'm extremely paranoid, or again, if I'm going somewhere where I know I'm going to be in a crowd, in a kind of high traffic area, in a kind of high danger area for pickpocket, I have a second method that I will use as a redundancy, um, and that is these little S carabiner clips. You can find a variety of these online. These ones, I think the brand is Night Eyes, and I'll link these below, but these particular ones actually have a lock, so if you see this little black piece, it's supposed to lock, so if you turn it that way, now you 
are unable to undo either of the carabiners so if you wanted to open it you just twist it back and now you can open the carabiners again so the idea is you can attach this to both of your zippers now even that without it being locked might be enough to deter someone but you can also lock it and now if someone did want to you know unzip and steal from you they would have to first unlock it they would have to maneuver it off and then they would have to zip which would be challenging to do with one hand it would be challenging to do quickly this is a good option and this one you can just transfer from bag to bag now i have found in i've used these a lot and i have found that after a while the little locking mechanism kind of loses its it just doesn't stick anymore it just becomes loose and just kind of wobbles all over the place so it's not it's not 100 percent foolproof all of the time which is why i will probably use a combination of both of these if i am extremely paranoid one other thing i will do if i am again very paranoid is i will tie these in a knot as you can see and then I will clip them together like this. So basically, basically just making it super extra hard for anyone to get in here. It's pretty efficient because you definitely need two hands to undo it. So if, you know, I think the thing with pickpockets is they try to be very smooth and very undetectable. But if they need to have two hands to be, you know, unlocking and untying and doing all this, they're going to be slowed down. They're going to be more obvious. They're going to be more visible and it'll be a lot harder for them to get in there. And then they will probably most likely try to avoid that situation and go for someone who is unfortunately an easier target so <laughs> and if i'm really really paranoid i'll do all three i'll have these i'll tie them in a knot and i'll put this one on there and then that thing is fort knox i know one thing to consider is from time to time people may try to slash your bag open with a knife and just you know grab and go rip things out that way i unfortunately don't have a great solution for that one with the items that i have personally i know a lot of specifically anti-theft bags that you can buy are marketed as having slash proof material a lot of bags that i use and purchase you know just by nature of them being more durable i look for durability and kind of you know sturdier fabric so the sturdier fabric the harder it is for someone to just slice it open with a knife like for example this baboon to the moon bag although i probably wouldn't use this one in particular for travel just because if you see i have a whole review on this about things i wasn't thrilled about it but the material that it's made of is very strong it's very durable so personally if it was some kind of material like this i would feel pretty confident that someone would have a pretty hard time slashing through this so i think as long as the bag that you're using has a pretty strong thick durable material that's probably not going to be a huge concern for you likewise with the strap people could slash the straps so you just want to make sure that you are using a nice strong sturdy bag with a strong sturdy strap that not to say that someone couldn't slice through it but you just want to make it more difficult for them to you know the ideal situation for a pickpocket would be just slash it grab and go but if they have to you know be sawing at it they're not going to want to stick around and do that so i have one more thing that i do for bags that don't have the double zipper like that like this is my preference i always try to look for bags that have a double zipper like this but sometimes if you are just looking at particular bag and you really like it because it's cute or it has some other function and it just doesn't have a double zipper that's fine this is what i do so this is my example i have this bag here which is like a triangle sling bag it's like convertible it can be one shoulder or two shoulders so it is pretty handy in some respects but there's only one zipper per compartment and you can't really you know connect these together because literally that would do nothing so the solution that i have come up with is and the solution that you 
that you can implement it may take a teeny tiny bit of DIY, but you can do it pretty easily. I just make sure that if a bag only has one zipper in the main compartment, I make sure that I have something that I can anchor that zipper to. So for I for this one in particular, I just took a little keychain jump ring and I just attached it to this loop that was already there. It's like the hanging loop. And on the zippers themselves, I put these little keychain carabiner clips. They're not the most sturdy or strong. They're just, you know, little, they're more decorative than anything, but it's better than nothing. And literally all it will do is clip to there. Again, this is not absolutely foolproof impenetrable, but what it will do is slow down someone long enough because they're, you know, they're going to have to futz with it. They're going to have to fiddle with it and make sure that they can get it off without being detected. It's probably going to be a little too hard, a little too slow, so they'll move on to the next person. So I make sure that I do this to any zipper that is going to be carrying anything of value. And I guess just I always make sure that for especially like the little front zippers in a lot of bags, I don't put anything valuable in there. I don't put my phone in this front pocket. I wouldn't with any bag at all. Say for example, I have my Fjall Robin conk in here. I have my little my, my little zipper pulls on the main pocket, but this front pocket, there's not really a great way to secure that. So I would definitely just not put anything of value in here. I wouldn't put my phone in here, wouldn't put my AirPods in here. All I keep in these front pockets is like ginger candies, Kleenex, and chapstick and stuff you know stuff that if someone did try to steal it whatever it's fine they can have it so if there's anything of value like a phone ipad computer your wallet your passport anything of value i always make sure to put it in the pocket that i know is secured so i didn't even do this for this video i just happened to remember that i had my you know fjall robin backpack on the ground and as you can see i have both of my anti-theft methods on it already because like i said i put them on every bag don't ask me why i have a lot of anxiety but yeah so this bag is already good to go so if i were to travel with this which i think a lot of people do travel with this one i would just make sure everything's all locked up tight you know, I would tie these in a knot, lock them together, lock this together, and then also, especially with bags like this where you have this little flap over the zipper, I always make sure to keep that down because that's another line of defense for you. That's another thing that they have to futz with. They have to navigate around in order to get in there. So basically, the name of the game is to just make things as difficult as possible for anyone who might want to steal from you so so that's pretty much everything that i do again if if you're going somewhere where pickpocketing is going to be a big concern for you i would definitely do more research than just watching this one video there's a lot of videos out there just make sure that you're prepared you're informed and you're aware of your surroundings and everything and you should be fine all right. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love, love, love to build my subscriber base this year. That's one of my goals. And I would love to have you be part of our community here. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you on the next video. Bye friends.